All right, here's a quick video to show you how to use the uh, Tektronix oscilloscope to display the analog signal as well as the digital signal using the logic analyzer of an I2C function. So if we uh, just pan down, so here you can see I've got it all hooked up. This is just a, a custom Arduino Uno, and uh, I made it like a Nano, but you know, whatever. And so right here, this really tiny SOT23 chip, or SOT236 chip, is the I2C device. So this is a digital potentiometer. So you can think of it as just it's, uh, the same functionality as a regular potentiometer, but this one's digital. And so all we do is we, uh, from the microcontroller, we send signals over the SDA and SEL pins uh, to that. And we uh, first send the address, and then once the device responds, then we send it uh, a byte of data, and that sets the um, potentiometer, the analog potentiometer output. So you can actually connect pins to these uh, two wires and actually measure a resistance. This will be just a regular analog device, but it's digitally controlled. Now I'm not gonna go over the steps of connecting it. It's pretty basic. You just connect the uh, ground pins or ground leads of the oscilloscope probe to ground, as well as one of the, uh, one of the digital pins for the logic analyzer cable. And then uh, I'm just using um, digital, uh, IO, uh, digital pin D0 and D1. Um, and so we're using those to display on the logic analyzer. So right here, we just you can you can see the the output that we're going to get. And I'll go through in, in a minute and just uh, show you how to set it up. But here we can actually see uh, some of the differences. So the analog will actually tell you what the actual voltage in reference to ground is of each signal, whereas the logic analyzer, all it's going to do is going to tell you uh, is the signal high or low. So here you can actually see some of the difference. Uh, but we'll go into that in just a second. So one of the things I always recommend whenever you uh, are in lab and um, are just going to start something, always press the default setup button. Uh, so any, any kind of settings that somebody did before, uh, any kind of sampling, averaging, any kind of other functions they have going on, it'll just go away. So you don't have to go and undo what somebody did. You can just do it with one the press of one button. So you can see uh, the, the program I'm running on the, uh, the microcontroller, it's, uh, I think it's, Maybe every once every five seconds, it's uh, it actually goes through and changes the value of the, of the potentiometer. So with this particular I squared C device, it's only a seven bit device. Uh, most I squared C devices are uh, seven bit, so which means that you can send it zero to one hundred and twenty six um, binary value, and uh, so uh, that means if this is a five k potentiometer, that means I can send. I can set the potentiometer into 127 discrete values. So it's not an infinitely variable, whereas an analog potentiometer is infinitely variable. You can kind of tweak it to get right in that sweet spot. Uh, this is going to be controlled um, 127 discrete values from roughly zero, but not quite zero, all the way up to and maybe a little bit above the, the full range of the, of the resistance. So one of the things I first want to do is you can see my, my time scale is, is way too high. Uh, we saw before we're measuring the milliseconds and you can even see uh, just briefly, you can see one pulse is several uh, time periods. So we're first going to change that. Yeah, we'll stick to hundred microseconds. And then I want to change my value. I also want to turn on channel two as well. Go away. And I'm going to set them both to two volts. And so you can see there, we got a pulse that's about, it was about two time periods. So I'm going to change the time scale a little lower. Well, a little more. No, actually, I want to change it a little lower to uh, less time. So you get a little bit more detail. Actually, that was a little too much, but eh, we'll stick to 100 microseconds. So you can see there really a uh, quick pulse is just going through. So um, one of the problems is that, you know, if you actually want to measure this, it's not going to be on the screen. So we'll just use the, the single. And so what we can do is just press the single. And, and once it uh, re uh, exceeds the trigger level, then it'll actually uh, zoom in a little. Once it goes over the trigger level, then it'll actually capture the data. So this is something you couldn't do in an analog scope. So here we're actually capturing up here, you can see the single pulse 
But now we're actually um, we're using the wave inspector, which is a, a little just a big knob on the middle of the oscilloscope. And so we're zooming in. So uh, yellow is the SDA clock, so that's the uh, data, data clock, and the blue channel two is going to be the clock pulse. So this is the one where it you can see it stays high normally, and then it drops low to initiate a, a you know to say to tell all the I squared T devices that might be on your on your bus that you're going to send data. And then it sends the address, and then once it respond, once the device responds, then it'll actually send the, the data to the particular device. So this is just uh, a simple device. There's no uh, the device isn't sending any information back. We're not getting it like a temperature sensor. Uh, so this is just going to be a two byte process. So it's going to be sending the address, and then we're going to let's zoom out or scroll over. And then the second byte is actually going to be the data we're sending to it. So this is going to be from 0 to 126, so 127 uh, binary values. Now, one of the things that's also really nice with this oscilloscope, so I'm going to go back to uh, regular run, turn off the inspector. One of the things that's nice about this scope is that you can actually do it in, use the logic analyzer simultaneously. And you'll see as it comes up a quick blip, you can see it. But again, we want to change a couple of the uh, various things. So if we're going to go to, uh, so in, we it automatically has D0 on, but we also want to turn D1 on. So we'll just use the multipurpose A knob, and then we'll turn that on. And uh, we don't need to do anything there. I like to have a little bit larger data. And as you can see, we can also change the vertical position. So like the analog scopes, we can uh, move the the waveforms up or uh, up or down in the in direction we want. And uh, also the logic analyzer, we can move them down. So of course I have to go through and uh, I need to select what D0. Now I want to, I should want to change that. I want to put that right there. So this allows us to actually display the information simultaneously. So I'm going to go ahead and press single. And there we've captured our I squared C pulse in both analog and digital. So we can actually use our, our pan and zoom. And we can actually uh, examine the data. So here we can see the ground level for the, the I squared C, you can actually see, so the analog channel will actually tell you the voltage over time, the actual signal. So this is, you can see the clock is actually dipping just a little bit into the negative voltage. Um, not too sure why that's going on. Uh, and you can see the actual uh, change of voltage of the signal. Whereas the digital logic analyzer, it's just gonna say, tell you the information. So this is a nice, convenient, clean waveform. So you can actually see so I'm going to turn off channel one for now. So this is the clock pulse in the analog and then the clock pulse in the digital. So you can see it actually, the information it tells you is identical. So this, the, the digital scope is telling you, hey, this is a low voltage, now it's a high voltage, it's low voltage, et cetera. Now with the analog, it's actually going to tell you what those voltage levels are over time. Whereas all this is telling you, this is all this is telling you is information. This is telling you information but it's telling you detail about the information. And we can uh, scroll to the right. We can actually capture more of the information. So I'm going to turn channel one back on. And so you can actually see here, actually if I zoom in a little bit more, oops, wrong knob. So here you can see in the yellow channel, let me turn the channel two off so you can see a little bit better. So here you can, uh, this is the acknowledge pin for, or the acknowledge pulse from the I squared C device. So this is where it's initially acknowledging. So you can actually, you can see the voltage over change, whereas this, it looks like just a blip. So it's telling you the information, but this is telling you much more detail about the signal itself. So if all you care about is, you know, ones and zeros of what the signal is, then the, uh, just using the logic analyzer will be, fa will be fantastic. But if you really need to get into the details of what the voltages are, uh, maybe there's some information that's not being displayed in the logic analyzer. Maybe there's a little bit of detail about the signal levels 
and it's some, maybe some glitchiness that's going on. So this uh, scope actually really is nice because, again, you can display information uh, about uh, in, in uh, two ways. All right, I hope that video was helpful.